another program of Women at the Well Ministries, where our highest priority is making God real in your life. You can visit us online at womanatthewellministries.org. Now sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen our daily walk with Jesus Christ. In this episode of the Woman at the Well Ministries podcast, join Kim Miller and Erica Close in a conversation as we walk with Jesus. In today's conversation, we continue a series of podcasts on the topic of God's command to fear not. Hello, and thank you for joining us in this podcast of Woman at the Well Ministries. It's such a pleasure to be able to just talk about this command that God says, fear not. And as we begin talking today, we're going to talk about how God is always close to us when we take a stand for God. I'm Kim Miller, alongside... And I'm Erica Close. And we invite you to just spend the next few moments with us as we just discuss what it means to know God is always with us, especially in those times when we feel like we are persecuted or somehow being negatively treated because we have taken a stance for God. And I think that is just so important because we we talk about the presence of the Lord being with us all the time, but I think that these scriptures that we're going to look at today are really clear that God's presence is always with us, but I believe that there is a special presence that is with us when we're doing something that's about him. I'm excited to look at these today. I mean, when you think about Paul and Silas when they were in jail, mm-hmm. and I don't know about you, but I just don't think I would do well in jail. <laughs> I don't think you And would it really either. doesn't have anything to do with the fact that orange <laughs> isn't my color. I mean, I just simply don't think I'd do well in jail. And it would be extraordinarily difficult for me to be singing the praises at midnight, which first of all means they were up at midnight, which, you know, would be difficult for me. But they're singing the praises which ushers the presence of God. And I think to myself, in that circumstances, because remember, they're, they're in jail for doing the right thing with God. Right. And I'm pretty sure that I would have this at least momentary tendency to think, really? Here I am doing exactly what you've told me to do. And I've, in my mind, ended up in a really horrible place. And so if we're not careful with our faith, Erica, and we don't really employ this trusting in who God is, if we don't really understand that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose in Romans 8, 28, we're going to be heading in the wrong direction. But today, glory to God, we have so many instances in the scriptures that helps us understand that we may never be any closer to God's presence than when we are suffering for him. Absolutely. And if anybody is curious, that account of Paul and Silas um, in prison is in Acts chapter 16. It starts in verse 26. But it is a pretty amazing passage. And I think that that passage too, because I believe that that special presence of the Lord was ushered in, they also then, even after the the miracle happened, right, when there's the earthquake and their chains fall away, they do something pretty amazing too, right? And that they they stay. Because that that jailer, right, the that was watching them is suddenly tremendously fearful because he knows that he's going to then be in trouble because his prisoners have gone away. And so they wait. They wait with him. They don't leave. They're free, and yet they don't leave. So they clearly 
that's an extra special presence of the Lord that's with them because the Lord has freed them to physically go, right, to leave jail, but they're not going to leave because they they understand what's going to happen to that jailer if they do. So they stick around until morning when, you know, the rest um, come. And I believe if we go and we look at the account, the Romans are like, just get out of here. We don't want you in our jail. <laughs> but, you know, you bring up such an amazing um, passage there. I think it's John eight thirty two that says, um, the truth shall set you free. They were free to do the right thing because they had placed their faith in God. And even though those looking around would have thought they were being punished for doing the right thing, look what God did with Paul. Look what he did with him. And I think all of us need to step back for a moment and realize that in our lives, sometimes we might have to go through a few things. He said, take up your cross and follow me daily. We may have to go through a few things for God to get us in the place that we need to be for he to have all of his glory and for us to fulfill his purpose in us. I love that. Erica, would you read 1 Peter 2, 19 through 25, please? Sure. All right, so uh, I think that the Acts chapter 16 uh, passage was bonus, right? That was, yeah, it was I'm, just bonus. That Came was to my mind all at once. That was bonus. Okay, so we are in 1 Peter 2, 19 through 25, and we read, For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself, committed himself to him that judgeth righteously." who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as a sheep gone, going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Well, I love that. Because I believe that passage of Scripture goes perfectly with what we were saying about the account in Acts chapter 16. But I know that probably nearly everyone within the sound of our voice has been in a situation where they were wrongfully accused, they were ridiculed, they were overlooked, they were made fun of, all because... They either wouldn't go along with the crowd that was doing the wrong thing or they wouldn't overlook a wrong that was happening or they simply just took a stand. And in those moments, if we are not fully in tune with God, if our faith isn't fully activated, we can feel lonely and isolated because That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to pull you away from the pack. But I got news for you. When the 90 and 9 were doing all right, he went after the one. And that tells me that he's with us all by ourselves. Whether we're doing wrong or whether we're doing right, he's with us. Absolutely. Because he said he would never leave us nor forsake us in Hebrews chapter 13, 5. And so he tells us, that we are not to ever covet anyone else, but to be content because we have with us the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he's giving us everything we need. And he's going before us and he's around us and he's protecting us and he loves us. So if the whole world's against us, it's okay. And it's okay because what's happening, you know, when we, we often talk about how the whole purpose of our Christian life is to become more like Jesus, right? 
And that, I think, for us to imagine what it's like to be like Jesus is a lot more simple when we're talking about going around and loving people, right? Going around and being kind to people and taking care of people and things like that. But we are also called to be like Jesus when we are persecuted, right? And this passage in First Peter is really clear because it goes on to talk about Christ being the example. So when we are suffering, because let's be real, Jesus suffered throughout much of his life. He was persecuted and ridiculed throughout much of his life. He didn't just suffer when he suffered his death on the cross. He was completely misunderstood, right? He stood for things that were not popular, He stood against the crowd, the crowd to which he belonged, right? Jesus was was a Jew. He he went against the Jewish rulers many times, we read in the Gospels. And so when Jesus went throughout much of his life, a lot of the accounts that we have of him are him being persecuted for standing for what is right and for what is truth. And so this passage tells us that in these times, right, when we are standing for truth and we are standing for what is right and we're standing for him, those are the times that we're most like him, right? Because right. for us to be as loving and good, as kind as him, that, that's quite the stretch, right? But to be in a place of persecution is probably a place very much like what he stood in often, And this passage, basically, we learn in this passage that when we're like him in that the most, right, that's when his presence is so close and so real and so with us. Amen. And, you know, he, this business of him never leaving us nor forsaking us, I think we take that for granted. But then I think when the going gets rough, we want to jump ship. And when you do that, we're doing the exact opposite of what we should because we're moving ourselves away from him. Away from the presence of God. Right. I mean, he's there, and he's wanting to be with us, but we can step out of it. And that's nuts. Mm -hmm. Because we don't ever want to take ourselves away from the center of God's will. And I think, you know, you mentioned this a second ago, but when we step away, we are allowing the devil to put, you know, a wedge between right. us. Between us. Absolutely. Right? Because when you think about it, you, you think about how we use a wedge to, like, separate two things. Right? I remember watching someone use a wedge to break up a a, a giant root ball once. And, um, you know, there, there needed to be a series of wedges to actually bust all this wood apart. Right? So when you think about, you know, how um, someone uses a wedge to break something apart, there's a tiny little crack. And they put the pointy end of the wedge into it. And then they hammer and they hammer and they hammer. And the, you know, the wedge, which is a, it's a machine, right? It's a simple machine. The wedge breaks apart the tree. Usually you use wedges on wood, right? So it's a tree. And, you know, that's what the devil is trying to do all the time. He's going to take advantage of any small crack, Right. And we all have cracks, right? We're all broken people that, you know, Jesus has is working on and has worked on. But there are always cracks there. And the devil's going to try and get us where we have weak places. And as he continually just hammers and hammers and hammers that wedge, we he, he gets in. And so if we open up the crack a little more, like we take a step away, we're just allowing him to not even have to, you know, Hit the wedge with a sledgehammer. He can just push He's it got us. There. He's got us. Not because God let go of us, but because we stepped out from under his protection. You know, it's interesting to me, um, you were reading that passage in 1 Peter 2, and he talks about who though people were reviling against him or yelling accusations and taunting him is how I look at that. He said he didn't do that back. He knew his truth, and he stayed in his truth. And he didn't feel like he had to express his truth because he was secure in who he is. And we as Christians need to be secure in whose we are. And when we are, we don't have 
to argue or or do accusations or be brought to their level because we know that we are in right standing with God. And as we begin to close, I, I want to head you back to Acts chapter 23 mm-hmm. and where Paul is, he's having a time of it with the um, Sadducees. And things are going bad and he's trying to plead his cause. And we see in verse 11, and the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. But he opens up with this. I mean, Paul's been in a a stressful situation, pleading this case about who God was and who he was. and, And so Paul is in front of this council, and God, Jesus comes and and, and says to him, be of good cheer. In verse 11 of Acts chapter 23. You know what? We need to really look at this a bit. Have a moment to where we understand if the world is picking on us and the world is angry with us, we're doing something right. Because they're most likely convicted by the God that is in us. And we're standing our ground. And we need to be grateful that God allows us to be part of his story to bring him glory. Amen. Amen. I just want to read Hebrews 13, 5. Please do. One more time. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have for he hath said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee amen and amen well that is a wonderful place for us to conclude this podcast on staying close uh that god is always close and when we take a stand for him he's probably never more close than he is at that time so we will continue with the fear knots and we thank you so much for joining us in this podcast may god richly bless you remember you are loved jesus loves you thank you all for joining us today in this program of woman at the well ministries we pray that it has been a blessing to you and we encourage you to reach out to us through our website or our Facebook page. You can find us at watwm.org and at facebook.com slash watwm where you will find devotions and many additional Bible resources to enhance your personal walk with God. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. If you would like to partner with Women at the Well Ministries, please visit our website at watwm.org. We would like to thank the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us play their hit song, Happy Girl. Greatly appreciate your prayers. Know that we pray for our listeners. Remember that God loves you and you are loved.
happy girl.